Hello everyone, Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel and it's time to talk about the legend, pioneer and figure that was Ebo Metropolis Graham. One of the founding members of the rap, hip-hop, bass act or group known as Foreign Beggars, one of the most renowned and iconic voices in bass music, no doubt, who sadly passed away uh, over the weekend in his own home, aged 41. I thought briefly, uh, very briefly, about whether I should make this tribute video or not. And then after, as I mentioned, a little bit of thought, I realised, considering the part this man has had in making and shaping the music that I love today, I couldn't not make a video talking about how important he was to me and so, so many others. A lot of big names in bass music tweeting about him over the weekend and uh, paying their respects and whatnot. A special character whose influence uh, just can't be underplayed or taken lightly in any way, I don't think. And hopefully this video will be a way of celebrating him for those that know him and his music well and showing those who aren't as familiar how important he was and will continue to be going forward in bass music even after his passing. You'd have to say one of if not the most recognisable and identifiable voice in bass music, especially alongside Pavan, also known as Orifice Volgatron, the other half of the rap part of Foreign Beggars. As a pairing or duo, whatever you want to call them, they just played off each other so, so well. You had the higher pitch, insistent and almost jabbing delivery of Pav, and then in contrast, you had Ebo's, which was a lot deeper, a lot of weight behind it, an amazing presence and resonance to it, you know? Very charismatic and matter of fact, and when you put the two together, it really was a match made in heaven, you know, Orifice Volgatron more hypey and lively and dagger-like. And then Ebo, who really rooted it, I think, and brought it down to earth and just gave it a lot more body, if you get me. A rap group initially, of course, starting out in the early 2000s, a turn of the millennium kind of thing. And they had a few others on board, as I touched on earlier. Uh, DJ No Names, who did the uh, DJing when they played live. You also had uh, Dag Nabbit, who was doing a lot of the production when they put out music. And I could be wrong on this one, but I read it up somewhere. They also had someone on board called Shlomo, who did a bit of beatboxing as well when they played live, which, of course, is very cool. They also formed Dented Records, which grew to become one of the most well-regarded and respected uh, hip-hop and rap labels of that time, especially in the UK. Crossing into EDM and electronic music generally, I think, in 2009 or 10, you know, started working with Noisier and then Never Say Die, uh, releasing their, what I think was their fifth album, United Colours of Begatron, which featured a lot of electronic music in terms of the uh, instrumentals on show and then that aspect of their music grew to become quite a big part of it and so all in all they had 11 albums in total uh, the final one being matriarchy which was put out just last december the one just gone must say here uh, not their final album because of what happened over the weekend but they actually announced that before it came out uh, yeah only Four months ago. It's just mad, really, how recent it was. In the earlier days, I didn't keep up with their stuff as much as I did with producers, for example, because the main people in Foreign Beggars, Ebo and Pav, uh, weren't producers, so I don't think it was as natural for me to seek out their music, if you will. I just kind of imagined that they would feature on other people's music and that would be it. I didn't really have an understanding of the fact that they had albums so other people must have made the music uh, and I didn't know that those people were a part of Foreign Beggars as well so um, that would explain that. 
But I've listened to all of it over time, uh, everything beyond the classics, of course. They collaborated with so many big names in bass music. Uh, just gonna run through a few of them here. Uh, Skrillex, Noisia, Knife Party, Schism, Flux Pavilion, Alex Perez, Cohen Sound, Calix and TB, so, so many more, you know, the list goes on. And I think it's important also to talk about the things that might not have happened were it not for Ebo's strong presence and uh, part in this scene, in bass music overall. Without Ebo, Foreign Beggars isn't what it is, so maybe Skrillex isn't as big as he is today. Of course, he had uh, scary monsters and nice sprites, but also he had Scatter and Still Getting It, which were also extremely important in uh, projecting him forward, Skrillex, at that early point in his career, in his discography, both of which Foreign Beggars, Pav and uh, Ebo featured on. On that note, without Ebo, without Foreign Beggars, who knows, maybe Never Say Die wouldn't be as big as it is today. Of course, talking about still getting it with Skrillex, which I just touched on. One of the breakthrough tunes for the label, I think, undeniably, coming from the Foreign Beggars EP, uh, The Harder They Fall, showcasing Skrillex and Foreign Beggars, uh, Ebo and Pav, as they were both blowing up pretty much at the same time. So um, yeah, who knows where the label would be at without that EP, without that tune. There also wouldn't be as direct a fusion of rap and hip hop and dubstep, D&B, bass music overall, without Foreign Beggars and without uh, Pav and Ebo especially, of course. You had Virus Syndicate doing it a lot as well at the time. They were also on the come up uh, as well, alongside Foreign Beggars, uh, the main kind of rap duo doing it, or rap duos, if you will. But having more people doing that crossover at that level just gave it added credibility, and um, it wouldn't have had such a strong presence in bass music overall, I don't think, if it wasn't for Foreign Beggars uh, doing their bit, if you will. Giving rap and hip hop a say in bass music, which I think was a very needed and necessary crossover. And uh, yeah, just fantastic that they were able to facilitate that and make it happen in such an effective way for so long. On that note of rap, hip hop, bass crossover, there's also, of course, without Ebo, without Foreign Beggars, no I Am Legion, their supergroup with Noisier, one of the best crossovers that bass music will ever see. Such a fantastic blend of styles and energies, some amazing songs which came out of it, and a top album overall, I have to say. They also released a decent amount on other big labels like uh, Mousetrap and Ausler, very much representing the uh, rap, hip hop, and bass crossover there as well. So who knows, maybe those labels wouldn't be where they are now without them, without their influence, that of Foreign Beggars, of Pav and Ebo. You then of course have the mountain of iconic tracks to their name, all of which elevated bass music a lot in some way. And also when it was really building and uh, taking shape in the earlier part of the decade, you know, they really, really caught the wave, doing something pretty much no one else was doing in the scene and it resulted in some of my favourite tracks of all time in music overall, not just electronic music. Uh, thinking about Scatter, Still Getting It, Contact, Make Those Move, Choosing For You, uh, Apex, Lines, Jump Back, uh, Badman Rhythm, Modus, Typhoon. Ah, oh, just so many legendary tunes, my word. It's just quite hard to kind of wrap your head around, actually, just how much incredible material they came up with and put out all of which changed my life quite a bit in some way. Still getting it in particular, I find very special, I would have to say, the dynamic and relationship between the instrumental and vocal, so pure, so organic. The chemistry in that tune is just, for me, completely off the chain. Uh, pretty much haven't heard that level of chemistry ever again in bass music. It's just an incredible instrumental made it 10 times better by the vocal. On the other side of what they did, you have albums like 
Asylum Speakers, which they put out in 2003, which many regard as one of the most important UK hip-hop and rap albums of its time which is quite special considering what they did after that. And you know, whatever way you look at it, from whatever angle you uh, view what they did as a group, you can just see how much uh, they achieved over the course of their career as a collective. All you have to do really is just look at all of these amazing projects that they put together. All of which, of course, Ebo was a massive part of. It's just so sad knowing that his voice won't be a part of a new tune ever again. You felt such a connection with his voice, uh, his delivery, you know, it felt like something to relate to. It was real and grounded in um, honesty and truth, you know, comforting, but also powerful at the same time. It was quite an incredible mix that his voice gave off, I think, guiding you through the music in such an effortless and charming way almost. Happy to say I did get to see them once in my life fortunately uh, to my knowledge I think it was just the one time and that was a very brief day set at SW4 Festival in London. Not sure it did them justice uh, being so brief and at that time of day but they were still so good you know so much charisma, animation, vibrancy and it was just pure energy. I remember the crowd absolutely loving it. And this picture here, I think you have to appreciate, uh, taken by my mate whilst we were there. You've got Pav on the left and Ebo on the right. The Foreign Beggars logo slap bang in the middle. Just perfection. As I mentioned earlier, their final album came out in December, the one just gone. And that does leave me wondering just a little bit what the others will do from here, uh, considering what has just happened, whether they will choose to honour him in some way, even though they have stopped making music as a group and they have put out their final album. But I suppose that is a conversation for another day for way further down the line, if ever. You know, it doesn't even need to happen, just um, interested, I suppose. Now, of course, it's time to reflect on Ebo and how amazing he was as a person, as a musician, an artist and a performer, so much more. It will be harder for those who haven't grown up on their music in the same way that I and many others have, but I've given you the classics. I implore you to listen to them again and again and appreciate what he and they did. I don't think you can love bass music today and not recognise his and their part in it. And just know that this scene, uh, what you get from it, all the good about it, uh, being a part of this community, uh, sharing music, everything that comes with it, would not be what it is right now without him. Moreover, and lastly, I think all the love now must go out to his family, close friends and those that worked with him. I can't even begin to imagine what they're all going through to have lost such a special person in their life, including his 10-year-old son, Cassius. Uh, there is a Just Giving account below in the description for anyone that wants to contribute. They have raised 33k of 50k so far, which is amazing. Let's help keep it going. Uh, feels great knowing that we can help Cassius and others that were so close to him in some way through this very difficult time. Someone so dear to them that gave us so much. Also, if you have photos of him, uh, memories of him, uh, with or without foreign beggars, you know, whatever, then uh, send them through to uh, Remembering Ebo, that is Remembering, E-B-O-W, at gmail.com. They're making a book of memories about him that I think they are going to give to Cassius at some point when they have enough. So yeah, if you have anything on that front, definitely uh, send it through. But yeah, I hope you've all been able to resonate with what I've said in this video in some way, uh, regardless of how much you knew him or knew of his music, his work, anything like that. What he did for the scene that we all love so much. But um, yeah, peace and love to you all. I shall see you in the next one, and rest in power, Ebo Metropolis Graham.